Hi there, Niklas here, and this is the third part of my field recording tutorial. In this part we are post-processing the sound. I'm going to use Reaper as my DAW, but of course you could use any DAW you like. If you are using Reaper, your screen may look a little bit different than mine, depending on theme and layout. So I have this default Comala 5 theme and default layout. And I have this master track visible here, but that is just for my screen recording purposes, so you don't need it right now. Okay, let's get the audio imported. We are going to use the audio that we recorded in the previous part of the tutorial. We are going to cover different scenarios when editing the audio, but before that I will show you some controls and shortcuts for Reaper. Firstly, mouse wheel is zoom. And you can click anywhere and zoom there. And with Alt plus mouse wheel you can move left and right. And if you are waveforms are really small, you can press shift plus up arrow to make them more visible and shift and down arrow to make it smaller. This doesn't affect the volume. And one quick way to select any audio that you like is to right click and drag like this. Okay, so let's cover different scenarios. The basic one is that you just want to cut out the beginning and the end. Let's say that this is the slate that you recorded. So we want to start from here. We can drag from here. Like this. Or you can click here and press S. Which is split. And then you can click this and press delete. And now you have removed the beginning. You can drag it the beginning. Let's say that this is the end slate. You want to take that off. You can do it like this, dragging, or you can press S to split and delete. Then there is this scenario that you want to remove some part of the audio and then combine the remaining clips. Let's say that you want to take some of the wind out. Here is some wind. And we want to take it out, so we press S and S. Select this one and delete. And then we drag this remaining part. So we make a crossfade here. Not perfect. We can make the crossfade longer. And now it's better. If you think that your audio is too quiet, you can make it louder from here. Or by dragging this here. And now you are ready to export the file. So file, render. Right now we have just one clip so we can use this entire project boundary. But if you for example would like to select just some part, you can do it like this. And then time selection. But yeah, we can use the entire project. Let's remove the selection. And then we write the file name and where to render and we select a sample rate. In this case we record it in 96k, so of course we can use that. Or if we want to, we can make it lower, for example 48k. And stereo. And for the format, mostly I use WAVE, because then I get really good quality audio. 
and then we render. Next, let's synchronize two audio tracks. In this case, we are going to synchronize this track with the one that we recorded with Sony D100, but you could also synchronize your audio with some video audio. Let's remove this one. And here's the beginning of the track. And then we get the other audio file. Like this. So when we recorded the audio, we recorded also a slate with two claps. Now we have to find the peaks somewhere. They are here. And also the camera. And again. I can split from here. And then I find the same in this track. There are a lot of peaks, so maybe some shift plus down arrow. So they are there. And then I can split it from here. Drag it. And then zoom in. Let's take the snap off. Zooming in. I'd say this is close enough. And again. Yep. So now they are synchronized. Let's do some basic cleaning next. In some cases you don't have to clean anything, but sometimes you want to remove some of the high-end hiss or self-noise or low-end rumble or if there is some noise. In these kind of cases I usually start with EQ. So I open the effects window from here. I use Fab Filters Pro Q, but you could use any EQ. Let's move this here. Let's listen. Let's make it louder. And you can hear and see some of the high-end hiss or self-noise. If you like, you can remove some of it, but you don't have to. So double click there and then we select this high cut filter. Then check the frequency. Don't take everything out. There should always be some of the high end. And then if you like you can take some of the low end rumble off. So double click there and low cut filter. In this case I would take just some of it. Okay. If there is some other noise you want to remove, you can try noise reduction or denoise plugin. For this example I will use another audio file, so there is something for the Denoise plugin to work with. This is a recording of a Red Wing. We can hear some traffic and other noise in the background. To remove some of the unwanted noise, I will use Isotope RX Voice Denoise plugin. You can of course use any plugin you have, but this is a good one. Let's try first the default adaptive mode, where the plugin tries to understand what is noise and what is not. 
Then we can try some options. What if it's optimized for music? Maybe not. I like to use gentle filter to avoid artifacts. It's better, but let's try more reduction. You can hear some artifacts if you use the noise reduction too much, so be careful with that. But let's push the plugin some more with the threshold. You can also teach the plugin the noise profile. So first you take off the adaptive mode and select a part of the audio that is just noise. And then I will click the repeat button to make a loop as my audio selection is very short. Press learn and press space. And space again. Remove the selection and let's listen. We can also try the reduction and threshold settings with this one. Let's say that you would like to lower the volume of some of your peaks in the audio. For example, this clap here. You can do it by using a limiter. Let's put our limiter into our master track, which is here. If you don't have it, view and master track. So, press here, double click, and this is just for my screen recording, you don't need it. I use FabFilters Pro L limiter, but you can use your own. And then to the output, double click, minus one. And now when we press play, it's limiting, so it doesn't clip on the master track. Let's say that you would like to get the loudness of some of the audio clips same, then you can use normalizing as a tool for that. So, for example, these claps here. We would like to get them at the same volume. This is now higher volume than this one. Let's split them. And right click and drag. Right click and item processing and normalize items. We can select the way to normalize, let's use peak, and for now let's leave this field like this, and OK. Now it changed this a little bit louder than this one, so they are similar. Our track is now stereo, so it has two channels, left and right. If you would like to have it in two mono tracks instead, you can do it like this. Zoom out, select everything, right click, item processing, and explode multi channel audio or MIDI items to new one channel items. So we can listen. As you can hear, they are in the middle. And if you want to make two mono tracks act as a stereo, you can do it by panning the left channel to left and right channel to right. That's about it. This was my field recording tutorial. Remember to subscribe and like. Enjoy.